Hello everybody, uh, Brad the Guitologist here, and in today's video I thought I would deviate a little bit um, from the sort of video I've been making lately, which is a lot of hi-fi systems and radios and so forth, and get back to my bread and butter, which is guitars. Uh, so in this video, we're going to take the opportunity to take a look at a guitar that was dropped off um, to have a setup work done on it. This is an early, probably an early 1930s uh, K-Craft guitar. Um, K-Craft was pretty much a precursor uh, to K. Um, they were formerly known before this as Stromberg uh, Voicenet. Um, and these K-Craft guitars of this sort were made from about 1929, um, according to some of my research, up until about 1930, late 1930s, 1937, somewhere along in there. Uh, they quit making these. This is called Venetian style uh, because the body is uh, constructed uh, with a shape very much like the Venetian uh, mandolins. Um, you know, all those little city states in in um, in Italy. You know, Venice, uh, Naples, other cities uh, had usually had their own sort of style of mandolin that they would make. Uh, and this one's called the Venetian style for, for uh, those made in Venice. Um, the real unique feature of this is that it has a bolt-on neck, which is not only bolt-on, but is also adjustable. And as far as I know, this is the first example of a bolt-on acoustic guitar neck. Uh, and it's also the first time that I'm aware of that a company has gone out of its way to try to uh, make the uh, neck on an acoustic guitar adjustable as well. Um, well, I say acoustic guitar, I really don't even have to preface it with acoustic because they were the only type of guitars at the time this guitar was made. Um, as you can see here, there's a there's a block of wood that is um, that is basically glued, I believe it's glued at least, uh, to the body, but you can see this block here and it has a curve in it and that curve um, lines up with the curve that's uh, that's the negative of that uh, carved into the neck heel. There is a screw back here but there's also a wing nut uh, inside the guitar and it's, that one's going to be kind of hard to see. There it is. Way down inside there you can see that wing nut right down in there. That is how you adjust the neck. You loosen the strings, reach up in there, uh, loosen that wing nut, and you can actually rotate this neck uh, so that you can so that you can adjust it. Now they made a couple different versions of this style guitar. They made some that were ladder braced and some that were X braced. The X braced apparently are a little more rare. This one is uh, an X braced variety with the block inlay, so I'm assuming this is probably a slightly higher end model uh, than some of the others they were making. They also made another um, shaped guitar which was a little more conventional, didn't have any of this cutaway stuff. It was kind of a, um, you know, like a maybe a Gibson, uh, sort of a Gibson ish sort of a shape, uh, a little more conventional shape. And I've had one of those before, but I've never actually ha owned one of these. I've seen them before, but never owned one. A lot of these too will have really elaborate. Um, decals down here on the on the bottom of the guitar um, but again you know the 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 really the most interesting feature of these again a bit, you know besides the shape and the obvious eye poppingness of that is the uh, construction of that neck that again that's the first time I'm aware of in the history of guitar making that someone has tried to make a neck adjustable in this way and they had a patent on this design and the other um, the other adjustable neck acoustic guitars uh, came much later than I'm aware of, and I have an example of those as well. Let's take a look at another uh, company which was experimenting with adjustable necks on acoustic guitars. All right, here's the second guitar uh, company I wanted to show you. This guitar was made by a company uh, called Jackson Gul'dan, which was uh, a company based in Columbus, Ohio. They had their own factory, uh, and they made these 
student grade guitars out of their own factory, which is kind of unusual uh, along about the 60s because virtually everything was being made um, in Chicago, even if it had uh, somebody else's uh, stamp or logo on it. Uh, almost all of the student grade stuff was made in Chicago. Uh, Jackson Goldan was one exception. What makes these Jackson Goldans really interesting um, is that like the earlier K-Craft uh, guitars that we looked at, these also have an adjustable neck system. Uh, now this particular model uh, is a square neck Hawaiian style guitar, but they did make round neck guitars as well. Uh, and they made some that had some funky names like uh, just Chris as the the logo on the guitar uh, but you can see on this one this one actually has a patent number a couple of the others that I have had in the past had patent pending uh, stamped right there in that location it looks like the patent number on this one is uh, three three million one hundred sixty nine thousand seven hundred thirty as the patent number and I have looked that patent up and it was registered by a um, Francis Luke Daniel. Uh, Francis Luke Daniel apparently bought the Jackson Goldan Company in 1956 and shifted focus um, more solely on guitars. Not entirely, but um, the focus was definitely more on guitars after that point because the guitar market was already beginning to sort of boom uh, with the onset of rock and roll. And um, the gentleman, uh, uh, the, the Mr. Daniel, uh, who I mentioned before, when he before he took over the company, actually he had worked at Sears Roebuck, so he had undoubtedly um, known a thing or two about uh, you know silver tone guitars um, and how difficult it was uh, for companies to create acoustic guitars that would be easy to play and easy to adjust by the end user. Uh, so I'm assuming that was his inspiration. Um, for creating these guitars in the first place, the adjustomatic guitars was because he wanted the end user to be able to adjust the neck so that they would get fewer uh, fewer returns, most likely. Um, and plus, you know, if you're shipping things all around the country and all around the world, as as these companies were at that time, you know, just the trip alone might be enough to uh, throw the guitar out of whack. So by the time it got to where it its final destination, uh, you would want to be able to adjust it. You can see here the uh, Adjustomatic logo or label inside here. It instructs you on how to adjust the Adjustomatic neck on this guitar. If I can get it focused in properly, we'll do that. Let's see. It's almost throwing, throwing it off. Anyway, you kind of get the idea there. There is a screw um, on the outside right here. And that screw has actually been replaced, but it's in the uh, correct spot. So what you do is you actually screw against that and there's a bracket inside, a very simple mechanism. Uh, inside here, there is a, it's like an L bracket. And you can see the back edge of it right there. And that screw that we I just showed uh, pushes against that, which lifts the neck or lowers the neck accordingly. Very simple mechanism, but effective. And it does actually uh, do pretty well at adjusting the neck. Now this other screw that's back here, that one there, uh, that just serves to hold the neck against the body, more or less, while the adjustment screw, that one there, allows you to uh, adjust the neck pitch up and down. So yeah, you know, decades apart, we're talking uh, 19, late 1920s on this one, um, and then we're talking a patent date of 1965 on the adjustomatic guitars. So they're separated by what, you know, a good 30 or 35 years, uh, but uh, we see two different but elegant solutions to the same issue of how to adjust an acoustic guitar neck. And both of these long before we had your Bob Taylors or, or your uh, Seagull guitars come along with bolt-on necks. Uh, now the only other companies I'm aware of that had bolt-on necks uh, in the 60s for acoustics was 
Framus or Framus, um, and also Hoffner, the uh, German guitar maker. Uh, they both had uh, bolt-on necks on some of their acoustic models. But so yeah, uh, that gives us sort of an overview on a couple of the solutions uh, that people have found over the years uh, to adjust uh, acoust acoustic guitar necks. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please hit the subscribe button for more videos like this in the future. And for now, y'all take care.